Hi everyone, we now learn about the second derivative test for classifying stationary points. Now suppose we're given a function f of x such that it has a stationary point, or critical point, when x equals to c. In other words, the first derivative f dash is equal to zero at c. Then the second derivative test states the following. If f dash dash of c, so that's the second derivative evaluated at c, is negative, then the stationary point is a maximum. So at the stationary point, if the second derivative is negative, we're dealing with a maximum. On the other hand, if f dash dash of c is positive, then the stationary point is a minimum. And the reason for this is when the second derivative is negative, it means that the curve's concavity is negative. So the curve has to be concave down. So any stationary point must be a maximum. On the other hand, when the second derivative is positive, then in turn the concavity is positive and the curve has to be concave up. So any stationary point would be a minimum. Last but not least, if f dash dash of c is equal to zero, then the second derivative test is inconclusive. In other words, we can't draw any conclusions about the nature of the stationary point if the second derivative equals to zero. And when that happens, we study the sign of the first derivative to classify the stationary point. Now we're gonna work through an example, but before doing so, do make a note of these three important results. Together, they form the second derivative test. All right, here's an example. Let's say we're given f of x, which equals to 2x cubed minus 21x squared plus 60x plus 8. And we need to find and classify any stationary points along this curve's length. Now, if we had our calculator, then we'd quickly be able to find any stationary points this curve has without using calculus. And in fact, this function's curve is the one that we see here. We can see that there's a local maximum with coordinates 260, as well as a local minimum with coordinates 533. But if we don't have a calculator, then to classify any stationary points along this curve's length, we may be able to use the second derivative test. So let's go ahead and get rid of that graph and learn how to do this by hand. The first thing we need to do is find the stationary points. And for that, we need to solve f dash of x equals to zero. Remember, at a stationary point, the first derivative is always equal to zero. So let's go ahead and take care of this. Looking at our function f of x, we can differentiate this using the power rule. Indeed, we can go ahead and state that f dash of x is equal to 2 times 3x squared minus 21 times 2x plus 60. And simplifying that leads to f dash of x equals to 6x squared minus 42x plus 60. And that's f dash of x. Now solving f dash of x equals to zero, therefore means solving the equation 6x squared minus 42x plus 60 equals to zero. Now noticing that each of these three terms has a common factor of six, we can write this as six times in parentheses x squared minus seven x plus 10, close parentheses equals to zero. Now the only way that this product of six and this quadratic will equal to zero is if this quadratic equals to zero. In other words, we simply need to solve x squared minus seven x plus 10 equals to zero. And to solve this, we can either use the quadratic formula or we can factor it by splitting the middle term. I'll go ahead and factor it, and in doing so, I notice that this is equal to x minus 2 times x minus 5, which equals to 0. Looking at these two linear factors, we quickly find the zeros. Indeed, this will either equal to 0 if x equals to 2 or if x equals to 5. So the function f of x has two stationary points, one when x equals to 2 and an other when x equals to 5. And we should calculate the y-coordinates of each of these two stationary points. So for the stationary point with x-coordinate equal to 2, the y-coordinate would be equal to f of 2 
In other words, we'd get it by replacing every x that we see inside f by 2 and calculating. And by all means check, but for the sake of saving time, I'll go ahead and give you the answer. That would be y equals to 60. For the stationary point whose x-coordinate is 5, we calculate the y-coordinate in a similar way and state that y is equal to f of 5. And again, for the sake of saving time, I'll just tell you that y is equal to 33. So the two stationary points have coordinates 2, 60, and 5, 33. Done. We now move on to step 2. And in step 2, we try to classify each of these two stationary points using the second derivative test. And for that, the first thing we need to do is find the second derivative. Well, starting from our result for the first derivative, which I'll just copy here, that was f dash of x equals to 6x squared minus 42x plus 60. Differentiating this again with respect to x, we obtain the second derivative f dash dash of x, which equals to 12x minus 42. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box that. There we go. Now for the second derivative test, all we have to do is evaluate the second derivative at each of the two stationary points. In other words, when x equals to 2 and when x equals to 5. So when x equals to 2, we'll have f dash dash of 2, which equals to 12 times 2 minus 42. And that's equal to 24 minus 42, which leads to f dash dash of 2 is equal to negative 18. So at the stationary point 2, 60, the second derivative is negative, which tells us that the stationary point is a maximum. Now that we know that, we look at the second stationary point at which x equals to 5. So evaluating the second derivative when x equals to 5, that would be f dash dash of 5, which equals to 12 times 5 minus 42. That's equal to 60 minus 42. So f dash dash of 5 is equal to 18. And since 18 is positive, the second derivative test tells us that the stationary point 533 is a minimum. And we're done. We've successfully shown that the function f of x has two stationary points, which had coordinates 260 and 533. And using the second derivative test, we were able to show that the stationary point with x-coordinate 2 is a maximum, and the stationary point with x-coordinate 5 is a minimum, which is exactly what we saw on our calculator earlier on. And there we have it. That's how to use the second derivative test for classifying stationary points. And that's it for this tutorial.